morning, Miss Aubrey. How's it going? Good morning, Miss Jessica. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. Good. We're um we're recording this on a Monday, guys, because we do record in advance, of course. And Aubrey and I both had amazing weekends, busy weekends, and now we are happy to be back at work talking IELTS. <laughs> yes, we're so excited to be here. It's a little tricky day because it's a holiday here in the United States, so my kids are out of school which is always a little harder to record. So if you hear kids in the background, they're at the park, but they might come home. You know what? I got you kids. never know. You, you never know what know. that's life guys. <laughs> that's life. <laughs> um, actually we are pretty stoked today to nerd out on some grammar with you guys. We, we don't talk about grammar a lot on the podcast because it is something that wastes a lot of students' time that ruins fluency scores on speaking because you're so worried about it. And then you spend time in your preparation on grammar that doesn't matter, right? And we don't want mm-hmm. to encourage you guys to do that. However, when we do think of a very specific grammar point that can increase your scores right away, we love to share this with you. So that's what we're talking about today, guys. We're going to give you three different ways to use super high level grammar, the subjunctive mood, um, and then you could use it on IELTS to really impress the examiner. Yes. And this is helpful for speaking and writing. You can use the subjunctive on either one. And just like you were saying, it's so good to point out because I've had so many students, if they tell me what they think is holding them back, they'll almost always say grammar. They're like, I think it's my grammar Mm -hmm. holding me back. And we have to make sure they understand the scoring system to realize it. No, right. It's actually these other scores often, but there are some specific grammar points that if you can use them, they can be an easy way to boost your grammar score to a seven or higher. And so, yeah, you can spend a limited amount of time to perfect that and boost that grammar score. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so the thing that got this brainstorm rolling for us was actually a student question in the three keys, Facebook group, right? Yes, exactly. Nadia, she's an amazing student. She always asks such such thoughtful questions. And she said, would you please explain the verb tense choice in the second half of this sentence? This team likes to play rough. So I think it's time they got a taste of their own medicine. She said, why would we choose the past tense instead of the future? Which in my mind seems logical. Please correct me if I'm wrong. This is tricky grammar. So what's so cool about this grammar conversation today, guys, is if you make these mistakes and I'm doing air quotes, if you're not watching this on YouTube mistakes, it's not going to hurt your score because this is a great example, guys, of where technically, you know, grammatically correct we should use the subjunctive here because we're describing a situation we wish were real, an unreal situation, an imagined situation without using a full conditional sentence, right? Um, Instead, we're using the subjunctive tense. The subjunctive tense is a past simple verb used not to describe the past, to describe something we wish were true now, right? So it's not about time. It's about mood. And here's something I want to make clear for you guys, because it is a tricky conversation. I understand that this is really complicated grammar. When we teach verb tenses to students, we really don't give you enough information sometimes because students think it's only about time. And that's not true. Every verb tense has two aspects. We have time and we have mood. Okay. So mood is this whole other aspect to grammar verb tense. And this is a great example of that. I'm not expressing time exactly. I'm just saying, I wish there were, this were true. So technically correct. We would use past simple there. So what I'm saying is like, I hope this other team gets what they deserve. You know, I want, I want this to happen to them. It hasn't happened yet, but I want it to. So to be grammatically correct, I have to use the subjunctive. 
And there's a reason we don't always give you all the information you need for every grammar point. Right. Because yeah. it just gets confusing. It gets complicated. It gets sort of bigger and bigger and bigger. You guys have taken grammar classes or at least English classes where there's a lot of grammar and you find it just start hurting your head because there's so much <laughs> about each verb tense. There's so much to remember. And when it comes to studying for IELTS, you don't want to get caught up in all those little True. rules. That's what can end up being a waste of time, right? So exactly. it's not yeah. that we've been doing it wrong. It's that we always, whenever we talk about grammar, we're very intentional intentional in how much information we give you and what yeah. information we give you to make sure it will help you get a better score. Exactly. Exactly. So um, that's a really good point though, guys. Like you don't have to understand the full explanation of when and how and why we use subjunctive because we've given you the highlights, right? This is what you need to know. It's a past simple verb and it describes a wished for unreal imaginary situation now, right? Something that you wish were true now, but it's not true. That's all you need to know, guys. And now we're going to give you three ways, three very specific sentence structures that you can use the subjunctive to really impress the examiner. And yeah, it is for speaking or writing, but I think I like we use this more in speaking on mm -hmm. IELTS because these sort of topics don't come up a lot in writing. You know what I mean? Like essays and stuff, we're describing facts. We're describing like real examples and ideas. So I would say this is even more useful in speaking. Yeah, for sure. So we're going to give you the first one here. If you're thinking about, if you're asked questions about travel or restaurants you would want to visit, and you're wanting to talk about, like you said, more of a hypothetical situation, something you'd want to do, something you wish were going to happen, this would be a great place to use it. For example, if you're wanting to talk about where you would like to go, and you could say, if I were to travel anywhere, I'd pick Costa Rica, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There you want to use the subject, subjective. And think about it's the same meaning as saying, if I could travel anywhere, right. I pick Costa Rica. But what we want to point out is that the second sentence is band six, right? It's more common grammar. Every student knows how to use the conditional accurately if they've studied English at all. That first sentence is band seven grammar. It's pushing it higher band eight, even where the examiner is going to be impressed that you're correctly using the subjunctive. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to extend on that a little bit so we can really understand um, the grammar scores here. So if you said, if I traveled anywhere, I'd pick Costa Rica. If you said that that's grammatically incorrect, but native speakers might make that mistake. You know what I mean? Cause like native speakers don't use the conditional and the subjunctive correctly a lot. Yeah, they often um, will make mistakes and no one, we're not that picky about it usually. Right. So it's not like you're, you know, you're losing points and it's this obvious mistake. Like that's something native speakers say. So I would say band six, like you could still, you know, that's a band six type sentence because technically it's a mistake, but not really because we say it all the time. Now level that up. If I could travel anywhere, I'd pick Costa Rica. That's an impressive sentence. All the grammar's correct. That's great. I'm going to say band seven. Now higher than that, if I were to travel anywhere, I'd pick Costa Rica. That's band eight, band nine. So there's really, there's so many levels to this. And I think highlighting the band six, band seven, band eight forms of the same idea. I think that's mm. a really great sort of lesson for students. Yeah, that makes sense. So then when you start picking it apart like that, guys, and thinking about your grammar score, you have to keep in mind too, just using one great subjunctive sentence is not going to give you a grammar band eight. It's very holistic, right? Are you also using your verbs elsewhere in the speaking exam correctly, right? Yeah. It's the examiners looking at your performance over the whole speaking exam. But if your grammar is very accurate and you're very doing very well, and on top of that, you can use the subjunctive correctly. Yes. Yeah. That's pushing your band eight, your grammar score to band eight. Totally. Yeah. Good yeah. point. Good point. Okay. We have two more phrases for you guys. Make sure you're writing these sentences down guys. Um, so the next phrase it's high time. Um, you 
presented this recently on social media, Aubrey. What is what does that mean? It's high time to do something. Yeah, it means it should really have already happened, right? Yeah. I, I realize I should have already done this. When I posted on social media, there were leaves all over my yard. Like it's high time I raked my leaves because I should have done it last week, really, right? It definitely yeah. implies urgency. It implies it's already too late. I need to get this done. It's overdue, it's right? Overdue. Like, I wish yeah. I did this before. I should have done this before, but I didn't. <laughs> so mm-hmm. now I need to catch up, right? Um, yeah, so this is also like, think about it in the context that we're giving you guys. This is also describing, um, a situation you're placing judgment on the present saying, I wish the present were different. You know what I mean? Like it's saying like, yes, I'm talking about right now. And right now is, I want to say something about right now. That's not real. You know, like that's really what we're doing. And I wish it were real. (laughs) Exactly. But to like get that meaning across that I'm describing the present, but it's not real. That's where the subjunctive comes in. Okay. So this is another phrase where if you use past simple, like it would be fine. If you're like, it's high time. I join a gym. Now that's present and that's fine. (laughs) Like it's, that's not wrong, but to be more technically grammatically correct. This calls for the subjunctive. So we can also say it's high time. I joined a gym, right? Like that's more correct (laughs) than using the present simple. Yeah. And you'll hear natives use both because like you said, like it's really how you'd have to describe the whole sentence in order to figure out what's my mood, what's actually accurate. So the examiner's not docking you for either of these. You'll hear natives use both, but if they hear that past tense, it's high time I joined a gym. They're like, Ooh, impressive subjunctive paying attention might get a band eight for grammar. Exactly. Exactly. Because we know if something sounds fancy or not, right? right? Even if it's like just a native speaker on the street, right? They would know they'd be impressed by that subjunctive use and they wouldn't mind the present simple use, you right. know? Um, all right. So the last way you could use this on IELTS speaking guys, the subjunctive to literally say, I wish. Okay. So this is sort of the best example of really understanding how, and when we use this to say like, I wish something were true. So I wish it were Friday. I wish I were better at English. I wish he weren't lazy. Okay. So there's another feature of the subjunctive guys. We are not conjugating the verb, right? I wish he weren't so lazy. I wish I weren't so lazy. We're just using that one verb form. Exactly. And this is where you will hear natives use it incorrectly. If they haven't studied a lot of grammar, I know a lot of people who would say, I wish it was Friday. Totally. I'm not judging them. I'm not correcting them. But when I hear someone use it correctly, I'm impressed. I love, I love using the subjunctive correctly. Like I'm always sort of (laughs) proud of myself when, because it's like, oh, I am speaking such proper English right now. This is why I'm an English teacher because I'm good at the words and it's like really exciting. Um, And you'll emphasize it a little more, right? Be like, I wish it were bedtime, (laughs) but it's not yet. (laughs) I know, but Aubrey's exactly right, guys. Like we don't correct other people if they don't use the subjunctive because The fact is a lot of native speakers do not use the subjunctive tense, guys. So again, you will not lose points on IELTS if you don't use it either, okay? What we're saying is you can really impress the examiner if you use this correctly once or twice. So just study these three structures we gave you today, guys, and practice using them in your own sentences, practice them out loud, and hopefully you will be able to use them on the test. Yes. Awesome. This is really fun. I love getting into grammar, but I especially love trying to make it really useful for you guys. So instead of wasting a lot of time, you can focus and improve all of your scores and spend the time that actually is meaningful and helpful on grammar. Yep, exactly. Um, Guys, we do want to remind you that we have a writing only course. If that is the only thing holding you back from getting your IELTS score, guys, and we know there's a lot of people out there that get sevens higher than sevens and listening, reading, speaking, and it's just that darn writing. 
So that is your situation, guys. Uh, go to allearsenglish.com slash writing only, and you could check out the three keys writing course. Yes. Awesome. All right. I'll see you next time, Jessica. This is fun. Awesome. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.